Hello, I'm Harrison Rose. I am founder and CEO of Telepresence Robotics Corporation. We are building the first commercial personal robot, which is robots as a platform. When I had conversations with the head of the AT&T Global Services Group about the need for a, an integratable platform into the IT organization, they saw this as being the winning need that would answer the questions as to why they haven't been able to sell the robots until now. We had same, same conversations with China Unicom, and my conversations at Cisco was with the, the head of the, um, the Global Innovative Centers. They want our robots in every center around the world. And this is because our robots can be programmed with applications and if they will be built by many manufacturers. The commercial marketplace is growing exponentially. It is going to grow into the neighborhood of $200 billion in five years, compared to the very slow growth of the industrial space. Now, the, the non-industrial robots include many forms of robots beyond just the commercial. But that's part of it is that there's this giant pent-up demand for the commercial robots because 99% of commercial robots are all single purpose. This is what the commercial robots look like today. There are tens of thousands of commercial robots of which only six of them are, um, or only six of them have APIs that allow third parties to develop applications onto their robots. And these are all manufacturers. They are like Apple in that they will not be licensing their hardware architecture to third party OEMs. So you won't see a Samsung or a Huawei building these robots. What we're doing is we're adopting the Google strategy for the marketplace, which went from a small percentage to now 86.2% of all smartphones shipped. Our platform is modular, it's in hard, hardware architecture and software, and the, it integrates with the ICT organizations. The, uh, and this gives the value proposition to three major customer groups, which are the manufacturers who want to build mass market robots, as well as the solution providers who are essentially robot app developers, and then the customers, like the IT departments, who want to have multiple suppliers, uh, which is a problem today in, the, in any robot marketplace. We have multiple uh, lines of revenue having to do with originally we're going to build and sell robot, but our company is not based on being a manufacturer. Our company is based on selling a, a, um, a motherboard to the OEMs, which is where the volume comes from. So we have a great team of Silicon Valley ex, uh, people. We're raising $5 million of seed round, which I can get into the details as to how we're going to use it. Simultaneously, $1 million in a um, angel investment, depends on who comes first for a discounted note. And we have revenue stream. This is obviously projections that, you know, like all projections, it's based upon best guesses. But we expect that our revenue is going to primarily come from our licensing uh, programs with third party OEMs. So thank you, I'm ready for questions. Again, my name is Harrison Rose, and I'm the CEO of Telepresence Robotics Corporation. Our slogan is, we build the robot, you build the app. Question here. Um, um, I, I like the metaphor you had with Android, but you know the secret between behind the Android is the open handset alliance, right, to drive the adoption very quickly in short time. What is your plan to drive adoption? I know you have talked to some of your customers or partners. What are some immediate actions to drive adoption? Uh, in order to dr drive adoption, there are uh, mul it's a multi-plane strategy. First off, we are talking to companies that currently manufacture and produce commercial robots that could benefit by not being a hardware manufacturer and amortizing the cost of their hardware out 
over the, the, all the development to get out of it, changing their economics to be able to be a software-driven company that has major uh, positive advantage for these companies. And I've had a, a number of companies waiting for our platform to, uh, to test it out. I've also talked to OEMs like Samsung who want to have, who are again waiting for our platform for testing and then if, if, if it, we get to the next step, they will start driving a mass produced versions and th there'll be multiple versions that will all use the same software. So uh, along that line, who is going to be the manufacturer? Would that, would that be a Samsung or an LG or a Sony or a GM, for heaven's sakes. Yes, and and contract so manufacturers as well. Contract manufacturers. Okay. Okay, got it. Because in because part of what we're going to be doing is be is enabling small run manufacturing of specialty units that will be at a higher price point, a higher premium price, uh, based upon a simulation that a designer, a solution designer, will be able to pick the pieces that they need. Okay, so you provide the design capabilities and then the infrastructure, the operating system, maybe motherboard, but it's basically that operating environment that allows everybody to build the same set of interface standards. Correct. Okay. How many app developer you have recruited so far and what is your strategy? We are still a little early on this. We've, I've been talking to a number of um, IT consulting groups who, are, who can look at this and see, oh yes, I remember when Oracle was new and we needed to do the, uh, the learning curve to be able to become a premier company developing Oracle or SAP solutions. And those are going to be the first adopters, the one who can see the future, because with our platform, the commercial personal robot can become pervasive. 